Am I to conclude that you're finished with it? No, don't conclude that. <laughs> uh, I probably now, on the average, spend uh, $100 a day. It's about uh, 2 o'clock now. Have you had any today? Not yet. But yet? Not, not yet. But you can believe when I leave here, it's probably be my next stop. Now, you're a well-educated man. You have some experience in engineering. Yes. You have earning power, obviously. Right. Why would you be fooling with this stuff? You can stand by and see what's happening to, to your own life, can't you? I used to say the same thing. I used to uh, witness people, and even people who were close to me, have their lives destroyed by it. And I used to witness people sit in these places and spend their last penny. And I say to them, how could you do such a thing, you know? But once you have tried it, you become the anchor banker, you understand. <laughs> it really, it's that much of a feeling or a sensation that it causes, it has wrecked lives, careers, broken up homes. It's, it's just something you can't really describe. What kind of shape is your life in now? Well, I've, I've been a little bit more fortunate than most that uh, I have a roof over my head. Uh, some people who are into crack usually pay their rent months in advance so they don't get evicted, the smart ones. Because, believe me, brother, if whatever money you have in your pocket you walk in there with, you're not going to walk out with it. So How much do you have on you now? A little over $200. And you're going to blow all of that? In about an hour and a half. What's the most you've used in a day? <clears throat> the most I ever spent was $1,300 in six hours. $1,300? $1,300 in six hours. I can't even describe it. I wouldn't, I defy anyone to try and tell me that the most pleasurable thing that they've ever experienced in their life. However, I would never tell anyone to take it. But I'm, once they have, I, I dare them to tell me that that's not the the best feeling they've ever had. You love it, don't you? Well, I don't know if I'd say I'd love it, but... Uh, it's... Well, if it's the best feeling you've ever had, you know what most people automatically right. think. Right. And it's better than that? Yes. It's better than that. Then you must love that. Then you must love it. It's, it's, it's nice. Now, I'm going to come down hard on you. Crack has made you its punk, hasn't it? <laughs> It's got you running, it's got your nose open, right. and it's your master. Yeah. You admit that, just like that. Sure. Some people won't. I know a lot of people who are undercover crack users or in the closet, but I have no qualms about saying that. Do you know anybody who uses crack and controls crack rather than vice versa? No. Crack is the boss. They will make you crack up. <laughs> crack is the boss. When you take that hit, that second voice that starts talking to you is now in control. You're not yourself anymore. You get up in the morning and that's the first thing you think about? Sometimes I dream about it. In going to these crack houses, you've probably seen some horror stories. You probably have a whole list of them, don't you? <laughs> well, unfortunately I do, and I've seen some people as young as I would say probably 16, 17 years old. I have been in that crack house on occasion where a young girl came in with her father and she couldn't have been no more than 16, 17 years old. And she says, no, no, daddy, it's my turn to buy. I've been in a crack house where I saw a girl in a Catholic school uniform come in and she couldn't have been no more than 16 or 17 years old. And she bought some cracks and left. And she didn't even go home and change clothes for her, so you didn't even send someone else for her. She came herself. I've seen telephone repairmen, the equipment and all, in crack houses. I've seen security guards in crack houses. I've seen transit workers in uniform in crack houses. And I guess it disturbs them not to be there because they are there sitting, smoking away. I've seen people come from New Jersey, go to a crack house, gas tank on empty, and can't even get home. I've seen people go to lunch and never go back to work. I personally have smoked crack in Harlem Hospital in the ladies' room with a girlfriend of mine who used to work there. I've seen women who will come to a crack house with their children and have them wait outside, 8, 9 o'clock at night. Children, have the children wait outside? Wait outside. Children 4, 5, and 6 years old are standing outside waiting for their mothers, and their mothers, and their mothers are inside smoking on this crack. I've seen a girl one day brought her baby to the crack house and she was in such a rush to get high that she couldn't wait 20 minutes to cash a check. She pawned her child to the crack man and says, please give me a dime. 
I'll be back in 20 minutes. Hold my baby. Hold her child. Yes, for $10. Bob Williams died not long after the interview I did with him.